Hey everyone, Victor is here, your guide to all things organic chemistry, and in this video I want to talk about the halogenation of alkynes. By the end of this video you'll know everything you need to know about the mechanism of this reaction, the stereochemistry, and all the tricks your instructor will bring to the test to catch you. So without any further ado, grab your cup of coffee and notebook to work through the mechanism and examples with me, hit that like button for good luck on the test, and let's get started. We'll start by taking the 4-methylpent-2-ion as our sample molecule here, and we'll react that with bromine. Let's take a closer look at what happens to our electrons. With one arrow we are going to show the electrons flow from the pi bond to our bromine. So the bromine molecule will be our electrophile in this reaction and the pi bond is going to be the nucleophile. I'll remind you really quickly here that the nucleophile is the species that provides electrons for the new bond and the electrophile is the species that accepts those electrons or in other words an electrophile is an electron sink. Now this electron uh, exchange change is going to make a new carbon-bromine bond. And since bromine cannot accept any more electrons, it has a full octet around it, we'll have to break the bromine-bromine bond like this. And this is going to make a second bromine atom in this uh, step just float away as a separate ion. And just like the same reaction with alkenes, the original bromine will reattack a carbon to form a helonium ion. This halonium ion has a positive charge on bromine. Make sure you remember that, because if you forget that plus charge, I can guarantee you will lose points on the test because of that. In the next step, the bromine anion that we have floating around will open this halonium ion from the opposite side, giving us the corresponding alkene. And as you can see, this reaction is a strict anti-addition, making a trans product. We can do this reaction one more time with an alkene that we have just formed. In this case, we are going to react this dibromoalkene with another equivalent of our bromine, which is typically taking in excess. That gives us another halonium ion, which opens up due to the bromide that are giving us the final product here, the tetrahalogenated alkene 2233-tetrabromo-4-methylpentane in this case. This reaction, just like everything that we teach you about chemistry of alkynes, is a bit more complicated when it comes to the actual mechanism. The experimental data suggests that this reaction, just like the hydrohalogenation, is most likely a thermolecular process where the triple bond reacts with two equivalents of the halogen at the same time. And the actual halonium ion in this case is never formed. But this is the way the most textbooks going to portray this reaction, so this is going to be the way I show it to you here as well. And at the end of the day, this is what is expected of you on the test, so I see no point complaining about that too much. Now, coming back to my mechanism, I also want to point out that alkenes are generally more reactive than alkynes in these types of reactions. So we would expect the second step in this process to be actually somewhat faster than the first step. However, while the second step in this reaction is indeed typically faster, it is still possible to stop it after the first addition and, so to speak, catch that dihalogenated alkene. If you're lucky, you can even then change your halogens in the middle of the way just before your second step. Instructors love to mix and match those in the test, so be prepared. For instance, if I took this molecule and treated it with bromine, I'll get a trans alkene like this one after my first addition, and of course, since this molecule is not chiral, it doesn't matter how exactly I draw it. However, if we now change our halogen and do the second step with, I don't know, an iodine for instance, then we are going to get a pair of enantiomers. And remember, reaction is stereospecific. It is a strict anti-addition. So if you are changing your halogens in between your steps, you got to be very careful with your stereochemistry. And don't just assume that you will always get a pair of enantiomers either. For instance, in this reaction, if I do this reaction with bromine and then change it to iodine in the middle of the way, I'm going to get a mesa compound, while here in this reaction I'm going to get a good old achiral molecule. So while the halogenation of alkynes might seem like an easy and straightforward reaction, it can easily bring a punch to the test if you are not paying attention. Thank you for watching! 
If you've learned something new today, please give this video a like, remember to subscribe for daily organic chemistry updates, leave your questions and feedback in the comments below, watch this video next and I'll see you tomorrow.